Hello, I'm Greg. Welcome to my channel, Midnight Oil Software, and another Unity game dev tutorial. In this video, I'm going to teach you a very useful trick that you can use in the Unity editor using numerical formulas to manipulate values on your game objects right in the editor. You can use it to arrange objects when level building, uh, to uniformly set values, to randomize things. It's really useful, and it doesn't seem to be that widely known. Even though it's not secret, it's in the Unity documentation, a lot of people don't seem to know about it. I shared this trick in the mastermind group that I meet with weekly, and these guys, they're very experienced Unity developers. They've been using Unity for a long time, and a lot of them did not know that this trick existed. One of them liked it so much, he spent a week playing with it and using it for his level building and world building on a game that he's developing right now. Hopefully you'll find it useful too. So let's jump over to Unity. And I've got this scene here with this nice space background. And by the way, I'm using an Asteroids pack off of the Unity Asset Store. I'll put a link in the description if you want to grab that asset pack. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take an asteroid from this scene, actually a prefab. I'm going to drag it into my scene. But before I do that, I want to create an empty game object. And I'm going to call this Grid. Uh, actually, I'm going to rename this Asteroid Field. Come over here and call that Asteroid Field. If I can spell. And I'm going to drag an Asteroid Prefab into there. And there you can see I've got an Asteroid. Now, let's say I want to randomly distribute a bunch of these guys um, in the scene to create an Asteroid Field. I'm going to select one of these guys. I'm going to duplicate them a bunch of times. All right, so I've got 14 of those guys. I'm gonna select all of these, and I'm gonna come over here to his position, and I'm gonna use the random function by typing R, and then in parentheses, I'm gonna specify the minimum and the maximum value. So I'm gonna go from negative 20 to 20. And now I've got randomly distributed asteroids on the x-axis from negative 20 to 20. Let's do this on every axis. And now I've got some randomly distributed asteroids in my scene. And you can also randomize their rotation. So let's go from negative 180 to 180. So they're randomly rotated. You could also play around with their scale and randomize them. And what's cool is I can take this whole field Let's duplicate that a bunch of times. So now I've got 10 of those. Let's randomize them all again, but this time we're gonna go from negative 50 to 50. And now I've got a pretty cool distributed asteroid field in my scene of randomly distributed asteroids. And they've got a random rotator script on them. So if I hit play, you'll see them all be tumbling in space, which I think looks pretty cool. But that's not all you can do. Not only can you randomize things, but you can use a function, um, a linear ramp functions to evenly distribute items along a line. So I'm gonna create an empty object here and I'm gonna call it grid. And then I'm gonna create an empty object and I'm going to call it row. And I'm gonna create a sphere inside that. So 3D object sphere. And there you see my sphere. Now I'm going to duplicate that seven times. So I've got seven spheres. Right now they're all sitting on the same spot. And I'm going to use the linear ramp to distribute them from negative six to six along the x-axis. And there you can see I've got a row of evenly distributed spheres. Well, let's duplicate that row seven times select them all, and then on the y-axis, go from negative six to six. And now I've got a grid of spheres. I mean, is that cool or what? But wait, there's more. Let's take that grid, let's duplicate that seven times. Let's select all of them, and then on the z-axis, go from negative six to six. And now, I've got a cube structure of spheres, evenly distributed. So you can use your imagination of what that might be useful for. I was thinking like a check 
chessboard type arrangement uh, where you want to make every tile on the chessboard uh, a drag target, for instance. I could just drag an object there, give it a collider, and you know what I'm saying. Uh, it's evenly distributed. You don't have to. I mean, imagine if you tried to do this manually, right? Let's delete all these. Let's go back to this row, select all these, and set them all back to 0, 0, 0. If I was to try to do this manually, I'd have to grab this and I'd have to drag it over and then deselect that and then drag all these over and then deselect that. And you get it. I mean, think about how painful that would be when you can do this so easily with just a simple little formula. But wait, there's more. Let's reset all these guys back to zero, zero, zero. There is another thing that you can do with these numerical functions, and that is you can use functions like sine and cosine. To show you that, I'm going to jump over to the documentation real quick. And like I mentioned, it's not secret. It is documented. It's just that a lot of people don't really seem to know about it. But here you can see that you can use sine and cosine on the x and z axis to arrange objects in a circle. So to see that, let's take this cosine formula. Basically, it's just cosine. And it's inside the cosine, you're doing a linear ramp from 0 to 2 times pi. And then you're multiplying that whole thing by the radius of your circle, in this case, 5. So if I jump back out into Unity, and I select all of my spheres, and then in the x-axis, I paste in that little cosine formula, go over to Z, jump back out into the documentation, copy that sine function, jump back out into Unity again, paste that in, and look at that. I've got them arranged in a perfect circle. And just for fun, I'm going to go up to this row, which is my parent here, and I've actually written a little script called Rotate. I'm going to drag that on there, and let's set its speed to something like 20, and hit play. And there it goes. All of the uh, spheres are rotating around the center of that parent object. So that's kind of cool. Um, so there's, there's some things you can do to like linearly or randomly place objects. Another use case for this, I'm going to switch over to another scene. I have another asset pack, Nature Manufacturer's Meadow Pack. And we're going to go into their demo scenes and their URP demo scene. So we'll open that up. And you get this beautiful meadow scene here. And I've already dragged in a bunch of prefabs for a fence. Double click that to select it here in the uh, scene. So you can see it's just a fence segment and I've got a bunch of them here. And once again, if I was to try and manually arrange this fence, I'd have to, you know, drag these over, deselect that, <clears throat> drag this over, Painful. So let's undo all that. <clears throat> We're going to select the last guy in the list. And I'm just going to drag him over to a spot that I think looks good. So take this guy and let's see. Something like 394 would probably be good. So what I'll do is I'll select all these guys. Come up here and do a linear ramp from 394 to 408. And look at that. <laughs> I've arranged a nice long fence over here. And imagine if that was hundreds of segments long, how quickly you could arrange this. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found that useful. Uh, if you did, do me a favor, hop over to my uh, channel and click like and subscribe and click that notification bell too so you can be notified the next time I post a video. And be sure to check out the links in the description for these asset packs if you're interested in that. I'm going to jump over here to the browser and here you can see on the Unity Asset Store the Dead Days of Summer publisher sale is going on. There's a bunch of assets on here that are 50% off. These are assets that basically these developers use. And uh, so that's why it's called the publisher sale. Um, but yeah, these, these are things that are recommended by these different uh, developers, Jason Wyman, Sam Yam, Sasquatch, and others. Uh, all of these things are 50% off. So check it out and see if there's anything on there you'd like to get. Uh, the Asteroids Pack that I mentioned in the Meadow Environment Pack from Nature Manufacturer is also um, 
available. I'll put a link to those in the description as well. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to go to my Steam page and wishlist my upcoming real-time cross-platform multiplayer card game, Highland Panic. And I'm looking for play testers. So if you do go over there and check it out, you can try the Steam version, the Apple iPhone version, or the Android version. Just play test it. Let me know if you find any bugs. I'm especially interested in knowing if there's any issues with the data sync with multiplayer games against other people, uh, mixed games with other people and bots. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you find any bugs. Hop over to my Discord server and give me any feedback. I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and good luck on your game development journey.